Welcome to the Swike Podcast, the only podcast that shares the stuff you didn't know you needed to know about jobs, careers, and life. The Swike Podcast, the stuff I wish I knew earlier. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Swike Stuff I Wish I Knew Earlier podcast. We're here again with our guest host, Vanessa Kolalilo, and uh, we thought we'd have a discussion on boundaries, perfectionism, and, and burnout. So how are you doing today, Vanessa? Good, good. And yourself? Oh, fantastic, as always. So uh, boundaries, perfectionism, burnout, I think very relevant in this day and age, and probably every day and age, but specifically now with uh, a lot of folks in, in the COVID, lockdown, work from home situation, the lines between work and, and uh, home are very blurred. <laughs> and oftentimes, it has led a lot of folks, I know I've had a lot of discussions for, uh, with folks on things like boundaries and, and burnout, things like that. And usually, perfectionism is somewhere in there. So uh, yeah, uh, maybe we talk focus a little bit on, on boundaries first. Um, so what, what would you say they are if we were to t- talk a little about in your experience, uh, what have they been? I mean, the dictionary definition is, is a line that marks the limits of an area, right? And, and professional and, and professional situations, it's kind of like uh, work requests outside of uh, uh, work hours, that sort of thing, outside the typical nine to five, working weekends and stuff like that. Those are what I typically hear uh, as kind of boundaries or, or, or overstepping boundaries. Uh, what would you say from your experience? Yeah, that's definitely accurate in terms of wanting to understand the definition. I think all I'd really add to that from my experience around what they are is also communication and Mm. expectations. So um, when I think of boundaries, I think of communicating expectations, not only with others, but for myself, right? What what do I expect to accomplish by today? Um, And what's top priority? I, um, I, I heard really great advice in the past as well around, you know, if everything's considered a fire or if you're always saying I'm crazy busy you know maybe maybe you're not looking at what you actually should be busy with that day right where where you where do you draw the line at, you know when you're looking at a list of priorities and um if everything's what you want to accomplish if everything's top priority you know what are you actually making an impact on so um to me it's it's setting those priorities setting those expectations so that you could be productive and um, actually make an impact on, you know, um, what what doesn't cross that line, what you don't want to uh, to cross that line. For sure. The, the quote, uh, if everything is important, then nothing is. <laughs> right? yeah. that, that sort of thing, because they're all on the sequel, s- same playing field. But uh, we, we know that that uh, boundaries are, are important, well, or, or maybe they are, maybe they're not. Um, and a part of it is, is well, uh, I, I don't want to seem like a pushover, right? Because like, I, I'm constantly getting work, people are coming to me to do this, do this. And then this is important. And this is important. And this is important. And then we get in, stuck into that. Um, and, and one of the concepts that that I often chat with folks are things like boundary violations, right? So if someone asks you to stay a little bit later, or work weekends, or this and that, right? And uh, I mean, with enough of those violations, that obviously eventually leads to burnout, which is not a good thing, um, in, in, in that sense. Um, but in, in, in my experience, uh, like, it's, it's really only a, a violation if you communicate it, right? Because sometimes you say, oh, are you okay to work uh, tonight? And if you say, okay, mm-hmm. well, that's not really a boundary violation because you said, okay, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, versus saying, well, actually, uh, could I make up for it tomorrow or do something else uh, because I have an important event and then you kind of set the boundaries. And if they still insist and say, no, we really need you. Okay, that could be considered a boundary violation. Uh, but without the communication, I think you, you touched on it a bit. Um, that, that I think is important. But what are some of your, your thoughts um, in terms of like the importance of it, uh, how you communicate it? And, and maybe if you can share like an experience or two in your life <laughs> where, where that's happened and probably not naming too many names. <laughs> that's sort of thing. <laughs> Yeah, I have, I have many, um, but you're, yeah, you're absolutely right. Like I, I think if you were, what really is the issue there is, is violating your, your own boundaries, right? If you're not communicating it, it, it isn't really on um, the company or the other people, but maybe you're, you're violating um, your, your own boundaries or haven't set them properly yourself. Um, so taking that, you know, accountability, that ownership over, really measuring your desk properly, measuring your calendar properly. Um, But I think, you know, if I had to talk to you a bit about the importance, I don't perceive it too much as, you know, um, I'm a pushover, but I think that's, that's sometimes a perception. Mm -hmm. I typically came from a place um, where 
I did always want to say yes. I did want to always help people and, and if it feels nice, but there's a reverse impact, I think when on your, pro your own productivity, um, and, and you're, you know, defeating your potential when it's, when you say yes to everything, right. When you mm. don't draw that line. So that's what I've, you know, learned over many years. I think early in my career, um, that was the phase I was in. I wanted to be on every project I can. I wanted to, you know, um, always say yes. And I, I easily learned that, you know, uh, I think in order for me to succeed a lot more, I have to start being comfortable to say, no, not at this time. Or, hey, can we talk about um, what projects should take priority? Because I, you know, really can't, really can't say yes to all of them. Um, stuff like that. Um, and, and I think to not go into experiences just yet, but around the importance, I think, um, as I was saying, like violating boundaries can, can really have a, a negative impact on work results, on your life, on your health, uh, not only stress, but, you know, eventually burnout. And I think if we're remembering that and trying to be a little self-aware, that's what motivates me to try to maintain that, you know, that work-life balance, try to remember, you know, how, how, how is my mental state so that I could have an energized day tomorrow, right? So that I could give my, my fullest potential um, to a company or to my career. Uh, and, and I think that's, that's why they're so important, right? Just um, making, making sure you, you're going to make the greatest impact you can by being energized, by staying positive and not burning yourself out. Um, for, for sure. I mean, a couple of things that came to mind is I know a lot of folks who uh, take the title of kind of people pleaser, uh, saying yes to everything. It's like, of course, I'll do it. Yes, I'll do it. I'll, yes, I'll do it. But that becomes, I mean, very subtle uh, boundary violations, which kind of extend the boundary, extend the boundary, extend the boundary. And it's not really violated because you're keeping, uh, keep on saying yes, but but eventually that that's what leads to burnout. And and the other thing that kind of uh, came to mind is is kind of that, that FOMO factor where uh, the fear of missing out, where you said, yeah, sure, I want to do it. I want to do it. And, and you do it from a place of like a positive intent, because I'd love to try that. I'd love to be involved. I'd love to be on, on that. But meanwhile, you have like 18 things on your plate. <laughs> and then when does it all get done? Well, because you committed to all of them and you want to get it all done, then, well, because you didn't set any of those boundaries for yourself uh, primarily, uh, and, and then all those things um, become a bit of a, a challenge, right? So um, yeah. And I, I love that you you mentioned FOMO. I, I actually was just thinking about that, whether <laughs> it's work or life that, you know, years ago, that's really how I was. I think I, I did have a fear of missing out on certain things and uh, wanting to see, maybe there's multiple plans, let's say in a weekend, wanting to see so many people, but eventually that could be draining, right? Maybe you don't have time to attend everything you were invited to, or maybe you're sacrificing, you know, not seeing certain family members because maybe you're with friends too much. Like there's, there's so much, um, I think reverse impact, like we were saying, if we have that FOMO mentality, mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's so important to kind of take a step back, you know, and, and view your priorities, view what you want to accomplish just week by week, really. <laughs> For sure. And and would you be able to share a few experiences and just kind of give uh, a story to you about kind of boundaries and violations or, or, or maybe the, the stuff I wish on you earlier about uh, how you might, if you retroactively you went back, uh, might have resolved or, or, or done things a little bit differently in those regards? Yeah, absolutely. I think the, the saying yes one is definitely a good one. That's what I wish I knew earlier, but um, I think it it at least got me to where I am. So it's, you know, it's sometimes okay to go through those experiences. I think at least now I do know from then that um, it's productive and it's okay to say, you know, say no or to pause on certain projects and prioritize effectively. Uh, so that's one, um, the FOMO, you know, around life versus, you know, um, events and work and trying to be at, all, you know, many places at once is definitely um, an example I experienced, but one, you know, more in detail, I'd say right now is, um, the work, the hybrid workplace life, right? Like mm. you were mentioning the work from home and, um, that's really what I'm experiencing, um, right now, where I really have to set, set those boundaries. I actually have an app called, uh, or, uh, Google calendar integration called mm. clockwise. That's been really, really helpful. And it, uh, it helps automate your calendar a bit. So it, mm know, forces you to have focus hours, it reschedules meetings, if you know, you don't have as many focus out hours or lunch available on your calendar, it benefits not you, but even people you're meeting with, if you know, an automated reschedule has to happen, 
it locks in your lunch hour daily. It really <laughs> kind of reminds you to breathe, to have time outside of meetings. And I'm experiencing right now, um, especially as my um, our company Soundhound really scales and is in growth mode, I'm experiencing a lot of meeting heavy days. And mm. by the end of the day, it's like, okay, have, have I done any work to now? I, <laughs> now do I work all night because <laughs> I've been in meetings all day. Um, so I'm really trying to set those boundaries, you know, making sure I have one to two hours a day blocked, you know, consistent hours back to back blocked for focus, uh, time for, for work. Um, you know, with, with my head down, not, not in meetings, I'm making sure that lunch hours, you know, visible on my calendar for myself to be reminded to eat. Cause at, at home, I think that's where that line gets really blurry. And um, I, I don't know if I've, I've definitely have a lot of boundary boundaries experience. I don't know if I've, cause um, it's definitely really real. I don't know if I've hit burnout, but I've been really close, I think, and self-aware to pause um, when experiencing some of the symptoms. And I think that happens a lot when working from home, you know, um, if my husband's home, for example, I'm reminded maybe to eat lunch together, but if it's just me, I'm like, you know, working through my lunch hour. And then maybe by 3 PM, I'm feeling extremely drained. I'm not, you know, without food or energy, I'm not as motivated. Um, maybe there's too many meetings that day. So at home, I, I find it harder, right. To commit to that, that, that boundary that, that mm -hmm. you want to, um, set for yourself where in the office, maybe there's a team lunch. That's really forcing you to, to get up and, and have a break. Um, Another thing with, you know, the hybrid workplace um, choice that I'm in right now is even just setting boundaries, drawing a line on your schedule, on your, your decisions. I'm trying, you know, and, and seeing it, it work well is to make decisions intentionally. Um, in the past, I thought, you know, working from home versus an office was, was just a preference, right? Maybe one day I'll go in one day I won't. Um, we were happy about that flexibility. We're now when I'm just experiencing as, as an adult and, and my roles evolving um, in my career, I'm, I'm realizing, you know, I, I have to be strategic and intentional with how my day looks, right? If, if I'm going to commute and go in the office and then be in meetings all day, is that productive, right? Is that one to two hour commute actually taking work time away from my desk? Um, or should I, you know, go in the office on a day where there's a team lunch, where there's less meetings, so I can actually see some people and get some work done. Uh, so trying to make, you know, those those decisions more intentionally um, is, is definitely what what I'm experiencing, and and you know that lunch hour boundary at at home. For sure, I think uh, that that being purposeful and having that intentionality intentionality <laughs> is definitely important. I'm glad that they have some some tools that'll help you to kind of automate some of that because sometimes when you're in the moment and, and stress and you have all these things going on, you you don't allocate that hour for lunch or the time to to relax, a little break in in, in the afternoon, that sort of thing, so that you can continue to to go. And what what came to mind is is, is maybe other areas where folks can could set boundaries as well because we talked a lot about kind of. Uh, the, the hybrid environment, uh, there's a lot of it is, is that those time boundaries where, okay, after hours working or not, um, or weekends and things like that. And, and uh, as, as a bit of a side, so, so I, I typically dress up, people see me and, and in a certain time, like, well, you're working from home. Why are you doing that? It's like, well, this is part of my boundary because when this is on, I'm working. When it's off, I'm not, right? And it's really helped me almost provide that kind of psychological kind of cue to say, okay, work and then off, no work <laughs> is that sort of thing. Now, once in a while, I kind of sneak out and still work <laughs> while I'm not in, in a certain time, but uh, a certain time, but, but it, 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 uh, it is less likely to happen. Uh, but some other areas are, are more like uh, scope, right? And, and what I mean by that is, is sometimes people are uh, hired for a particular role and they're asked, hey, could you do this as well, right? That's not exactly what they're supposed to be doing, but could you do it as well? And for some people, it's like, sure. And then sure, and then sure, <laughs> sure. And then they end up doing stuff that they're really not supposed to be doing. Um, yeah. Now in a startup, that that's kind of part of the game, right? You, you have to co contribute. But in some larger organizations, it might be, well, if if I'm supposed to be doing this other stuff that's not part of my core job description, when do I actually get to do my core job, right? So things like that. And then you also mentioned a little bit on, on things like friends and family, where like, it's not just at work, but like uh, your family wants your, your time, your friends want your time, your any other interest groups or social things need your time too, right? So it's also understanding uh, how to set boundaries along there where 
you need your your own time as well as time for work and time for friends and, and family and, and things like that. Are there any other uh, areas of, of kind of boundaries that you would uh, kind of suggest uh, folks to think about drawing lines? Yeah, um, you mentioned some great things. I mean, I, I love the example of like your dress code, your attire. I think, you know, people have different, like there's no rules around how to effectively avoid burnout or how to draw boundaries I think we're all very different so it's kind of finding what works for you and, and mm -hmm. trying to be aware of you know what what you feel and um for me I have a similar example you know um sometimes I often like to stay in the kitchen while I'm working mm -hmm. on you know on a kitchen island or I have my my tea or coffee nearby um you know a snack if I need need to but it gets very blurry right that's my living space it's not mm -hmm. my work space and um, so I, I then, you know, uh, go, go into my office, go into my desk. And I, I feel that sense of, like you said, when I'm here, I'm working when I'm, when I'm out of here, I could at least, you know, get away from the laptop and that's, that's where the line's drawn. Um, so I love your, your dress code attire. And I think there's so many different, you know, different approaches people can take. Um, you, you mentioned a, a great thing around, uh, startups, right. And, and just taking on more and more work that maybe, isn't really part of your primary deliverable. I definitely have a, a recent and, and you know good example that I guess is, is a general tip as well um, for others is uh, around measuring your success. So I got to the place where I'm a recruiter, right? So uh, primary deliverable is to is to produce hires for the company, right? Help help job seekers find a great place to work at Soundhound. Um, but there's also projects, right? And um, sometimes you can take on too many projects. So um, what I experienced recently is, you know, growing um, a list of more metrics and data and complexity around how you measure your success, how you measure your goals. And I think that's something that's, that's really helped me recently. Like um, I, I reached a point of confusion where my my results versus my goals versus, you know, what's a priority was really coming to my mind. And um, I wanted to make sure I was making an impact on the right things, right? Reaching my my goals before it becomes discouraging and, and confusing. Um, and I think that's that's what's key is, is having data in front of you, right? Having, if you're not sure, you know, opening up to your leaders, to your peers around, you know, what, what are the business goals? What are, you know, our top priorities? What projects should I maybe put on pause? Cause I can't focus on them all, you know, really impactful plus, plus deliverables. Um, so I think that's, what's really helped me taking, you know, taking the approach of really opening up to your leader, you know, having that communication that I think some people maybe hesitate around to say, you know, I'm struggling these past few weeks or, um, things are really confusing. I, I, I want to look at a bit more data or, or metrics around what my goals should be, how my performance is. I think it's so important we measure ourselves, um, not just for the company, but to measure your own success, right? Or else um, it could it could get very confusing. Like, you know, am I performing well? Am I feeling rewarded? I, I think data is really the answer to a lot of that um, so that you can continue to improve, continue to measure, know what to work on. Um, and that open communication. For sure. And it goes to the quote, I think it's something to the effect of uh, whatever, what isn't measured can't be managed or something like that. Uh, and, and obviously you want to manage these boundaries so that you don't learn, uh, go into to, to burnout. And, and maybe we'll, we'll switch over to burnout where, I mean, uh, that often happens when a lot of these violations happen. And sometimes it's a huge boundary violation or a series of like death by a thousand cuts, <laughs> so to speak. Um, but probably want to get into some kind of warning signs if, if you're at the cusp or, or uh, about to feel that. So uh, the the example that, that came from, from my life is, is uh, I, I was a management consultant in my past life and we would have to go to clients and uh, do workshops and things like that. And they asked me to do this one for uh, a new technology that uh, no one in our in our a department had ever used. So I was like, sure, why not? And what I would do is on the plane over to the client, I would read all the manuals and get up to speed on that, create a, a, a workshop deck. And then I would uh, uh, perform the workshop and then they had questions and I'd say, let me get, get back to you. And then at the hotel room, I would uh, figure out what the answers to their questions were and then create the next workshop for the next one, next one, next one. And I would be doing that for weeks on end, where it is, well, not exactly a 24 hour a day. And I actually prided myself that I could get by on like four hours, two hours, zero hours of sleep. 
<laughs> definitely not advisable for anyone. And then what, what happened is after a couple of weeks, like I, I, I was lucky to have a, a senior manager that, that uh, was really interested in my health because he said, Luki, you don't look good. <laughs> and he literally said, you don't look good. And it's like, seriously, I've been watching you for the past couple of days. I, I want you to go right now, go back to the hotel and get some sleep. And he had, he had the foresight. Yeah. So that was a great, for, and that was a kind of a, a eye-opening moment. And uh, I, I went, I kind of slept it off the next day. I felt really good <laughs> and I was able to keep going. And, and we had a conversation on like, okay, what can we do? Uh, and how do we manage this and all that sort of stuff? Because a lot of it, it was, again, me not setting the proper boundaries and, and part of the FOMO and, and people pleaser and wanting to do all those sort of things. Uh, yeah. So all with good intentions, but not necessarily getting the, the, the great results. So uh, yeah. obviously some of the early warning signs are some things like exhaustion sleep problems and and maybe you're not enthusiastic about what you're doing uh your performance is going down there's there's probably mental sometimes even physical stress where you might get headaches and and stomach problems or just you just want out of there that sort of thing and yeah. hopefully you're not turning into to things like like food or drugs or alcohol to kind of overcompensate but those are some of the things that folks want to uh work out uh, look out for and, and you mentioned that you never really got into burnout, but you're probably close a few times. Uh, are there a few that you can kind of highlight or say like, well, here's a couple of couple more warning signs or, or are there things to, to, to think about? Yeah, I think it's those, I use the word discouragement. Um, and uh, I think that's, that's one of the biggest ones. I felt um, a sense of, you know, I, I'm usually a very passionate, excited, <laughs> you know, driven person um, with my work. And I think there, there was a time few weeks ago, really. So we're all still, you know, we're always learning. Uh, I don't think it's it's something that could totally disappear. What, mm. what I think is, you know, like you said, with your experience, just being aware of that and then pausing, re-energizing and hopefully getting right back to it. But mm -hmm. a few weeks ago, yeah, experiencing that like discouragement, really, you know, like a lot of lack of motivation, almost, almost like an irritation. So I think that's, mm. you know, a huge symptom as well um, in terms of like, my the, the way I felt mentally inspired it was just super different one week but you know the next after that re-energizing after you know looking at a bit more data to better measure my performance talking about you know change you know with with my role and, and future career um you know the the path we're, we're headed on um really looking into the future instead of the the current feelings you're having helped you know, bring back that energy, bring back the motivation. Um, but I, I think I, like you said, I overworked myself. I, you know, was in a lot of meetings. There is such thing, you know, as meeting fatigue. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm experiencing that and it's draining right on, on the mind. Um, and, and by the end of the day, if there's too many meetings, that's, I think that's what I experienced, just not getting enough work time for a few weeks, um, you know, when you know, you know, you could do something, but maybe just having got to it is is not a good feeling. And um, that that was my experience, a bit of that exhaustion, uh, discouragement, you know, the the desire and, and intention to want to do more, but just not getting to it, right? Not getting the time in. Um, so that, yeah, that was a bit of my, my symptoms in a way. And then just, mm -hmm. we, you know, we've made, even on my team just made a huge difference on talking about priorities, um, using this clockwise uh, little integration I have, yep. um, canceling meetings, you know, pausing some projects. This is like real industry discussions that happen for, I'm sure, a lot of companies. And um, sometimes they, you know, they change month to month, week to week, just just talking about, you know, um, what what you should be focusing your time on. And, and that's really helped uh, just totally change my, my mindset as well and, and motivation. For sure. And what I took from that is uh, that that recharge time over the weekend is very important. Make sure that at least one or two days, I know, especially folks in the startup world, the entrepreneurial like works often on your mind and you can't really disconnect. But really, if you can, uh, at least an hour, a day, uh, the whole weekend, if you can. Uh, I'm reminded of someone who, who uh, we were talking about how, how like work is a marathon. And he kind of said, no, it's not a marathon. It's actually a series of 52 sprints, right? Because <laughs> I tell you, you should go hard Monday to Friday, but you need to re rest and relax and then go hard again and then rest and relax, right? So yeah. um, a different perspective. Um, I want to yeah. have a- oh, You mentioned, uh, I was going to say, you mentioned like recharge days, I, I think. And um, it's, it's often as like, as humans, or if you know, you like yourself, you were saying, if you really want to accomplish something, you know, you can just work through the night and it'll be, mm -hmm. you know, it'll be worth it. I, I think 
uh, we have to remember, you know, we are human and that won't lead to, to the best results. And uh, mm -hmm. recharge day is something we're experiencing actually at, at Soundhound. And I feel, you know, super fortunate for that on Fridays, we have uh, little to no meeting day Fridays, um, early end uh, around 3 p.m. Um, so really just giving back that time that, you know, um, even if it's not possible always, or you're not making it happen, mm -hmm. it's that reminder that, you know, recharging and re-energizing is important. And, you know, a company's valuing that. I think that's, that's uh, super critical nowadays. For sure. I think a lot of companies are understanding the value of uh, making sure that their people are are well taken care of and engaged and have that time to actually work and unwind and, and dis disconnect. And uh, and it seems like that that the, even the government is, is getting in on that, because I think uh, we want to chat a little bit about some of the new legislation. So for those of you in, in uh, Ontario, in, in Canada, uh, there's uh, something called the, the right to disconnect. Um, and I'd love you kind of share a little bit of, of your thoughts on that and, and maybe give folks a little bit of insights in terms of like rights and things like that, that they have uh, as a result of that. Yeah, so it's a very new legislation. It went into effect on June 2nd, so um, just over over a week now, uh, specific to Ontario. Ontario is the first to roll this out, from my knowledge. Um, like we were discussing earlier, Luki, not many people are aware or discussing it yet. Um, I've heard a little bit about it on the radio. Um, my company has, you know, released it to our uh, Canadian office. Um, I think right now it's important to make awareness about this. Um, what it is really is the, the right to not engage in work-related communications, including, you know, any emails, any calls, video calls, sending instant messages, being free from performing outside of work hours after your work hours. So it kind of goes back to what you were discussing, you know, you do have to communicate those work hours is what that means, right? You do have to maybe um on your calendar outline your typical day or you know hear from the company what is our typical day I think um you know I I was I am still very much in a place where I enjoy the flexibility right if you know some days I want to work 7 a.m maybe end around four if some days I want to start at 9 a.m I I enjoy that you know um flexibility but that in those cases I think it's a little bit more difficult to draw draw a line, right? That's where it could become a bit blurry. Um, so this is really allowing us uh, this law to have that reminder that you know once once you shut down, you don't need to respond. And uh, having leaders remind you about that could be helpful, right? Or if it's not aware, you know, sharing this this right with others can be helpful right now. Um, and there's some examples too I, I can mention on, you know, disconnecting. I think if you know, let's say you haven't communicated those hours, it might it might get difficult to feel like you still have that right. It does need to be communicated and, and known. So, you know, turning on out of office notifications when you're not working, pausing those notifications, um, maybe even like setting expectations around your response times, right? Knowing if you're, you're, you're logging out typically around four, set the expectation so people can communicate to you before 4 p.m. Um, I think that, you know, that's a, a really big piece of it. Um, out, you know, limiting those virtual meetings and those, um, a lot of people are using, you know, uh, workplace chats like Slack or instant message um, platforms. And I guess, you know, it's very easy on your phone to be answering those all night if it's yeah. a quick message. And, you know, sometimes I'll be very honest, that makes me feel better. If it's, you know, a quick response at 8 p.m., I might, I might want to acknowledge that and then move on. Um, but then you you can often you know very quickly enter a bigger discussion that you didn't think you started right or talk about an entire project for the next hour um, just by answering that one message. So um, I think it's you know limiting that and, and being aware of that. And um, yeah, I'm I'm excited. I'm I'm glad Ontario's acknowledging this and really the first to to do so. But um, we'll see how how it works or you know the pros and cons it has on such a hybrid world as well. 
for sure. Yeah, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of a good and bad that come out of it. Uh, hopefully, people don't um, kind of take advantage of it as well, as well, because there are always some emergencies where, like, you know what, for the good of the company, you want to do that. But if it's every single day, every single week, or something, well, something's not right, <laughs> and maybe yeah. uh, something needs to be adjusted. But uh, as we st start to close off uh, this episode, because I'm sure we could keep on going on and on, but uh, how about a couple of tips for for setting boundaries or avoiding burnout? So, I mean, the main tip is sound like it's communication right between your boss and and uh, your, the management team and your your team your peers and your reports all of that would be good so that people know work hours not work hours uh, and any times where you have to really make it to the gym or pick up the kids or you have a, a class or uh, whatever something that you need to do um, I think any sort of tech that you can implement uh, would obviously be a good one. Uh, even minimizing kind of like notifications on on devices and stuff like that, like on your phone, take that. Uh, I think some of them have like a do not disturb mode where certain ones yeah. don't kind of pop up in other in certain times. Uh, I know some people have like a work phone and, and, a, and a personal phone, right? But that's kind of two devices. It's really up to you. Uh, one th that I found quite helpful for, for on, on the email side and some messaging apps have this too is is to schedule the send right so if it's late in the day and in the evening set it to send at 8 a.m or early the next morning versus right now because at least you know it's dealt with because you answered it but you you're not subject to the person's response at uh, during dinner at 701 because they decide to pick up their phone uh, as well right um yeah. yeah are there any other sorts of uh tips and tricks you'd you, you'd have for uh kind of setting boundaries in addition to uh, and avoiding burnout in addition to what we talked about yeah you mentioned some great ones um as we close off probably a few to add um if people you know listening are slack users there's uh, and i'm sure on other platforms there's um, meeting reminders messages reminders like you said pre-scheduled um messages I, I often use that if you can't tackle something now you know make a quick automated reminder and you're not forgetting about it but at least you don't feel overwhelmed that there's that pending message right and mm -hmm. pick when you want to focus on that you know remind me in three hours remind me tomorrow um that that's always great like you said technology clock clockwise would be my recommendation right now um would you know love to answer any questions people might have around that it's mm -hmm. been really really valuable to um, myself and some team members. Uh, another tip I'd say, or one of the last one or two would be asking for feedback and, you know, uh, being vulnerable, you know, sometimes, and, and that's not always easy in business, right? And um, being aware of your emotions, right? It's, um, you definitely want to, you know, you know, be emotionally intelligent, but you don't want to ignore your mental state. You don't want to ignore your emotions. It, it happens to very successful people. It happens to everyone, every human. Um, so I think just asking for feedback, measuring your performance and your, you know, your goals with data so that you can, you know, stay, stay happy, stay motivated and, um, and transparent with, with your uh, improvement over time. I think a lot of that leads to, you know, why we end up being in a burnout phase or, you know, working too much, crossing that line, right? And um, I think just yeah, trying to build more data for yourself and, and measuring your success could be really helpful. For sure. And one of the last tips that I want to kind of end off with is um, we talk about like doing too much. And there's actually a quote which kind of illustrates a little, pretty well where uh, we don't do too much. We do too little of what, what lights us up. Right. And, and I find that there are times when you're doing a ton. But you're still energized because oftentimes you're you're putting the boundaries, doing self care, going to the gym, and eating properly, spending time with your friends here and there. And it might be only half an hour, fifty minutes uh, at a time, or whatever it is. But you're doing that consistently so that throughout the day, your energy level is not dropping, 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 and getting to zero. It's mm -hmm. dropping, 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 re-energized, dropping, 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 re-energized, dropping, dropping, re-energized, and then eventually you you still have something in the tank at the end of the day. Um, so consider why those boundaries are important. Is you want to make sure you're still energizing those do those things that you love uh yeah. throughout the day and you can still manage to do a lot so uh, uh yeah. thanks so much uh, vanessa for joining us on this conversation on uh boundaries and burnout any kind of last uh parting words oh i was gonna say it's very true just get that exercise in that's also something i've been <laughs> trying to commit to that's where the boundary you know can't get ignored um committing to two to three times a week um that's that's something that's been really helpful i think um, you know, going for a walk, getting some air, eating lunch, these things are so important and we enjoy it and it makes you come back and, and do better work. So that's, uh, 
that's what I've been experiencing. Thanks so much, Vanessa, for the conversation. And hopefully we'll have you back for a future episode. Awesome. Thank you so much, Luki. Talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us on the Swike Stuff I Wish I Knew Earlier, the podcast. If you like the podcast, please subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you found this podcast. And if you can give us a review, that would be very appreciated. Feel free to contact me on LinkedIn at Luki Danu, L-U-K-I-D-A-N-U, and the same on most social media platforms. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks. Bye.